Hi, my name is Karen Huzar and I'm a third year student at Fleming College doing the Ecosystem Management Technology Program. Today I'm going to teach you about some equipment that you will need to know for the forestry module of Envirothon. A forest stand is defined as a community of trees possessing sufficient uniformity in composition, age, arrangement, or condition to be distinguishable from the forest or other growth on adjoining area, thus forming a silvicultural or management entity. This is a diameter tape, and what it's used for is to measure the diameter of the trees. You'll notice on the one side, it has measurements in centimeters. Now when you look closely, you recognize it doesn't actually give you a correct centimeter. That's because it's already been calculated to give you the diameter when you wrap this tape around the tree. Before you can take the diameter of the tree, you need to locate breast height on yourself. What you will need to do for this is take a, me a meter tape, put it underneath your foot, and then bring it up until you find 1.3 meters on yourself. So I've located 1.3 meters on myself, which runs right across here. So I'm going to take my diameter tape, wrap it around the trunk of the tree at 1.3 meters. Once you have the diameter tape wrapped around the tree, ensure that it's 1.3 meters from the ground and a straight around the tree. Then what you'll do is take the reading. So where the tape measures zero, go straight above it once it's crossed over and read off that number which on this tree is 46.7 centimeters. So the diameter of this tree at breast height is 46.7 centimeters. Now the next piece of equipment we're gonna look at is the Suntos clinometer. This is a very important instrument for calculating the height of a tree. What you'll notice is that there's a dial right on the front here. Look at that Suntos. On the left is the one to 20 ratio scale in the center is the 1 to 15 ratio scale, and on the right hand side is the percent ratio scale. So how you're actually going to hold this instrument is like this so that you can see the dial on the side and you're going to look through the little hole on the back. Now, hold the clinometer up to one eye and just so you can get used to it, close one eye and take a look inside. What you'll see is a fine horizontal bar and as you move the the clinometer up and down, you'll see the dial moving with the three different scales on the side. So, what you're actually going to do with this instrument is you're going to decide whether you want to pace 15 or 20 meters from the tree you're going to measure the height of. Depending on how far you measure from the tree will then determine which scale you're going to use on the clinometer. I've paced 15 meters from my tree, so I'm going to use the scale in the center. Now. Hold the clinometer so that you can see the scale with one eye and keep your other eye open and look at the tree in question. First, you're going to want to make sure you can see the bottom and the top of the tree, otherwise you won't be able to take a correct measurement. For the bottom measurement, I'm going to take my clinometer and look at the bottom of the tree where it meets the ground. On this one, where the horizontal line crosses the bottom of the tree, for me, is at two. The top of the tree measurement is taken the, where the highest point of growth is on the tree. So, when you hold up the clinometer where the horizontal line crosses the top of the tree, read the number on the scale. In my case, this occurs at 25. Now you have to do the math. The formula that you will need to use to find out the height of the tree is working distance divided by the scale of the instrument and then multiply that by the top reading, subtract the bottom reading. I measured 15 meters from the base of the tree, so this is my working measurement. Then I used the 1 to 15 scale on the clinometer, so for the first part of my calculations I divide 15 meters by the 15 ratio, which equals 1. For the second part of the calculation, you subtract the bottom height from the top height of the tree. So in this case, it's going to be 25 meters subtract 2 meters, which equals 23 meters. So then, multiply the 1 times the 23 meters, and the height of my tree is 23 meters.
In order to create effective management practices for forest stands, managers need to know the species, ages, and densities of trees in that stand. Thus, forest inventories are completed. One component of the forest inventory is the cruise. There are two main types of cruises that are used. They are the strip cruise and the plot cruise. A plot cruise can be made into many shapes, but most often is a square or circular shape as they are easiest to duplicate. Measurements are then taken of the trees and other plant material found in the plot. In a strip cruise, transects are laid out parallel to each other with a set distance between the transects. A variety of measurements can be taken at specific points along the transect. As you cruise the transect, you will need to determine how many trees are in your transect area. This is done by determining which trees are considered in or out. A tree classified as in will be included in that transect. A tree classified as out will not be included in the transect. Now this little piece of glass isn't a piece of your grandma's glasses. It's called a prism and this one helps to measure whether a tree is in or out. Again, you're going to need to know the 1.3 meter height on yourself because you'll need to know that height in order to use this piece of equipment. You're going to hold the prism at 1.3 meters and then look at a tree. Use both eyes and when holding it up to a tree, whether a tree will be in or out depending on whether the trunk of the tree that's inside the prism, whether it's in line with the tree, touches the tree, or is not in line with the tree at all. Here's an example of what you'll see when you look through the prism. As you look at the bottom here, you can see that the trunk of the tree within the prism does not line up with the trunk of the tree outside the prism. However, they are touching. This means this tree would be classified as in. However, when you look at the trees behind it, right here, you can see that they do not match at all. See, here's the tree I'm looking at. When I put the prism in, the bottom of the trunk outside the prism does not meet with the piece inside the prism at all. So this tree would be classified as out. This leaf here is actually not six, le seven leaves. It's one leaf, it's a compound leaf. See here where it actually joins the stem and it has all these different leaflet parts. That's considered one leaf and it's a compound. This is an example of a simple leaf. There is only one leaf attached to the branch as opposed to multiple leaflets in the compound leaves. Now, here's a good reason why you should leave dead woody debris in a forest. This used to be an old trunk right under this tree here. Now, this seed fell on top of the trunk and as the trunk decomposed, creating soil was a perfect microhabitat for this tree. Now that all the bottom of the stump is decomposed, you have a hole below and the tree looks like it's growing out of nothing. And when a large tree falls down, it creates a hole in the canopy. And then all the small vegetation that has been stuck at the sapling stage now has the opportunity to shoot up into the sunlight and become a part of the canopy. Lichens are made, made up of a mutualistic relationship between fungi and the plant kingdom. Um, the plant part of the lichens is what traps the sunlight and produces food and the fungal part of it um, decomposes the leftover material and keeps in moisture and they both help each other out. A mature tree trunk is composed of five main layers. From the center to the outside they are the heartwood, which is the center of the tree containing the older inactive material. It gives strength to the tree. The sapwood, also known as xylem, which is younger active material that carries sap from the roots up to the leaves. The cambrium is a thin layer of cells that divides the sapwood and the inner bark. It is the growth center adding xylem to the inner tree and phloem to the bark and creates a sheath over the twigs and branches. The inner bark, also known as the phloem, is the young active material in the bark that carries the food made in the leaves down to the roots. 
The outer bark is the old phloem which creates a protective coating around the tree and can be used to identify some tree species. For each year of growth in the tree trunk, a ring is created and these rings can be counted to determine the age of a tree. Scientists can use the tree rings and learn about the conditions that the tree grew in. This study of tree rings is called dendrochronology. For example, if the ring is really wide, then there was a lot of growth that year, which could be the result of a good rain year. A series of small rings could indicate there were poor growing conditions, which could have been the result of drought or a bug infestation. It is not necessary to cut down a tree to determine its age. You can use a tree core and take a representative sample out of the trunk without harming the tree.